We're totally unmuted. We're ready to go for the Between the Rolls show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, Kyle, we really need you to write up like a theme song for this, you know, because you'd be so good at it. So hi, everyone. My name is Carol and welcome to Between the Rolls, our attempt of, of having a talk show of by the Murder Hobo Inc. crew and, and guest. Since uh, DJ is relatively new to us, but I'm so happy you're here tonight. Uh, yeah, another we'll... sacrificial lamb. <laughs> Let me go through the usual BS. Uh, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter. Check out our YouTube archive where many or most of the episodes we've had in the past are the, the there. Uh, check out our store for all sorts of good gear. I, it's, it's too bad that, that we I can't get a design on the front of this it's only on the back but i love this sweatshirt um and of course we have a discord channel too so come and join us there and to talk about dnd or life or whatever uh just come and talk to us we, we post up funny stuff frank like frank posted up the the series of doodles that he did while he was playing uh when we were playing on saturday night so uh let's see and of course we have our awesome sponsors first of First, uh, at Farnost is Oddfish Games, uh, the creators of Adventure Sense. So if your game stinks, at least the room will smell wonderful unless you're using sewer, because I heard that is just, that's just, you can taste it. It's, it ta it's like a sewer. But hey, you know, if your players are in a sewer, if your game's in a sewer, atmosphere. Uh, and we're probably supposedly we're supposed to be all we get it. will be getting that sent to, in our, our stockings this year. Har, har, har. <laughs> and then uh, they also are um, they also are the creators of the Shine Plot Engine, which is a series of writing prompts for advanced and novice writers to get your story off of the ground. Uh, and our other sponsor, of course, is Pirate Dog Dice, makers of fine dice, perfect for killing monsters or PCs, except for our campaign PCs. He couldn't kill us. Um, just you remove their limbs. Yeah, just take off our, you know, the, just mine too, you know, specifically. Everyone else was, uh, Chris has got some sort of, for our Manise has some sort of crippling injury, but he didn't lose a limb. Uh, Taryn lost a leg. So, uh, <coughs> so the next thing is I go around the horn and have everybody introduce themselves. I'm going to start with, hey, what the heck? I'll start with David. David, <laughs> tell them a little bit about yourself and what you do here. Well, how can I follow that up, Carol? Uh, hi, I'm David. <laughs> I'm a semi-regular here on Between the Rolls. It's becoming more regular. Semi? Though. Yeah. Well, no, I'm, you're I'm, a regular. Yours like me, okay? I'm first a volunteer. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> well, you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, I'm David. Volunteer. I play on our Thursday show, Cacophony. It's our uh, ongoing soap opera campaign. Campaign. <laughs> it's totally a campaign. It's only three people, folks. So that doesn't matter. <laughs> you can have a campaign with one person. Okay. So, so yeah, so I'm on that and occasionally on a one shot on Saturday, like this past Saturday, which was a great one. Uh, we actually played Pathfinder, so we'll talk all about that later. So we get so to anyway. say the P word around here. Isn't yeah, that I know. You got carte blanche with that today. Yeah. So. Pathfinder, 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 Pathfinder. All right. Uh, next, I go with DJ. DJ, tell us a little about yourself. I am DJ. I'm just a regular gamer, uh, you know, being sucked Def into Carol's world. Uh, <laughs> I have decided to actually show up for the talk show today, which I'll probably be pretty quiet until we talk about Pathfinder, uh, because I was in the game. Um, and also, I figure I can also give my own two cents for Pathfinder Second Edition, since I have uh, read, played, and GM'd some of it before unlike these other uh, novice individuals. That what? Are I'm not playing. novice. Well, there. not you. I'm talking about the other two. I think it would be boring <laughs> oh, just no. listening to you. The only We're pretty seeing novice. Carol's game, I thought she was pretty novice this past Oh, oh, oh shut up. On. I did great, hey, actually. Just because it was enjoyable doesn't mean that it wasn't novice. 
It wasn't. I mean, nervous. I would have expected a two-hour game from you, not a two and a half hour game, but well, that's just me. I think the feed crapped out for about five minutes there. And then, <laughs> you know, you guys, you could have killed the big bad instead, but no, you didn't kill it. You just let it go on. So that I had a chance to shank you at the end. Oh yeah. I blame YouTube. All Thanks, right. Anything else, DJ? Uh, I think that's pretty much it. I got not a lot more to say until we get to the Pathfinder stuff. Yeah. Um, and thanks to DJ, that's how I got into the Pathfinder Society. So he dragged me kicking and screaming. Well, no, at, during a convention years ago. So thank you for that. Last but not least, Kyle. Kyle, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Or is he sleeping? Am I sleeping? Yeah. Brought their time. I am never awake. I, I dream <laughs> constantly. Uh, hello, everybody. I am with the limited amount of info. Go with the last 15 <laughs> euros. Spend the rest of the time Frank's on Frank's writing game. notes to us just as an uh, you Don't worry, Frank. I already said that. So, ha. Bam. Uh, Who are oh, you? Hi, Kyle. I'm Kyle, and uh, I, I play a lot. I, I DM second or third most. I don't know. After after Scott. Oh, I, I think you're number two, but I. Ah, you know ah, what? I'm always think. number two in my mind. <laughs> Just a big old pile of number two. Uh, anyway. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I don't have much to add after. I was going to say, where are you going, man? <laughs> uh, I'm just the scholarly dreamer who is expected to be an expert in everything and has to talk about some stuff later tonight. But yeah, you're an expert on. in Blue Rose. Yeah, yeah that's apparently right. you're the expert in Blue Rose. Because... I read the first nine pages. I'm good. <laughs> that's, you're all good. That's nine more pages than I To be said. honest, that's, that's, that's usually more than what Carol preps with. Oh yeah. shut up! I, I do tell, not. Honestly. I do not. Oh no no! I, I love I love the comment of always. Uh, hey, you should read this. You should read this. Ah, I'll just I'll just figure it out as I go along. That's the <laughs> best. Nice. Honestly, that's the best way I work. I work, See? I work See? as I go, but I do works. at least know the basic rules going in. Jeez! All right. Oh, so. you would think. <laughs> All right, so let's see. So let's part of the first half of this, and then I'll be tossing it to Kyle. Uh, but let's see. So the first half of this tonight, of course, is going to be talking about the games we played, although we're going to skip the Pathfinder one, the Saturn and Out one, till later because we're going to go over uh, some of that. Um, but, David, we'll start with you because we have episode 180, which was our Thursday cacophony offering, That's our it. total campaign it's a campaign uh episode 180 northbound so did you guys go north we did actually you mean you made a decision on where you were gonna go yes we did we made a decision on where we're gonna go we're heading uh to telosia um and we kind of got sidetracked uh well to get to telosia uh, we had to make a stop in a place that's appeared in our other campaign, uh, the city of Cathaway. So as we're making our way up north, uh, we do a port -a call in Cathaway. So, yeah, but prior to that, our voyage ended up with a seasick Zadar. Head over the rail for the entire journey oh, until see. until a manor core decided to rain uh, fire and fury on 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 us, which we managed to talk our way out of. You know, so anyway, we landed in in uh, Cathaway. Uh, we tried to meet uh, you know Dwayne the the Brick Johnson or whatever. I don't know. Ah, uh, shoot! I know what you're talking about. Oh I yeah. Don't Flip and remember. Yeah, home of the underground. Here, uh, I'll go crab on to. Club. Yeah. I'll go on to Twitch and. <laughs> so anyway, Let's folks, uh, we ended up there. We ended up uh, meeting, yeah, Matthew McConaughey-like character. Uh, <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right, all right. Yeah, uh, we um, we talked our way out of the encounter with the Manicore. Uh, 
the Manticor was looking for the the ship that uh, killed its mate. And lo and behold, in Cathaway, they're trying to sell the pelt of the Manticore. So, yeah, the adventure ensued after that. Uh, ended up with an altercation with uh, the slayers of the Manticore. Uh, us trying to commandeer the the pelt to return it uh, to the Manticore's mate. I don't know if this is a good idea, but I don't know. We're just kind of rolling with it. Uh, yeah, and it also ended up in some destruction. So anyway, <laughs> that was our episode. It's a great episode. You need to check it out in the <laughs> archives and all that. We, yeah. So things are getting oh, interesting. Oh, We're not Carrie, in cacophony anymore. I think Carrie's on chat because I assume she's the pirate dog dice there. Unless Frank is stolen her account. You never get to do the, the never get to the crab fights. No, we didn't make it to the oh, crab fights. I'm so disappointed, man. That's like the highlight. But we're still we're still in Castle. Still there? Oh, okay, yeah, so you can there. get there, man. You guys oh, yeah. are gonna go there. Yeah. And then maybe should be like I, that episode I was in a while. Oh God, uh, around Gen Con time, where they actually were actually they fought the crab. So, well, one, one of, of the our things PCs that was fought the crab. featured in a in a, the <laughs> other uh, it was either a one shot or a campaign. You know, it was the spinning wheel with the manacles on it in the bar. So yeah, we were in Salty's bar. So yeah, I gotta say, I I kind of wonder like. I wonder what the manicore is thinking right now. So does the manicore know that <coughs> the mate's been skinned and there's just a pelt? Uh, I I don't think they know to the extent to its mate's demise. What you know, but it just knows it's been killed. It we convinced it that it's not us, and yeah, we tried to ensue some manicore justice on the people that killed it. So so anyway. Yeah, that's, so that's this this, this could go bad. And this could go really bad. <laughs> so you're right. It is Dwayne the Brick Johnson. Yes. So. Yes. All right. So. Anything else you want to say on it? Uh, tune in uh, the next uh, for the next episode. I'm not sure if it's going to be this Thursday. That's still up in the air. Yeah, uh, because so. it's Christmas Eve, and yeah, yeah. You know. I don't know. We're still waiting for the word from our fearless leader, whether or not we're going to roll that night, but probably, uh, I don't know. Maybe. Hmm, I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> fearless leader, you're on. I know he's on. Hey, fearless leader, put it, put it on Twitch chat. If we're playing, if you got, if you're planning on running a Thursday or not. Yeah. Just like, I guess I don't know. He's probably just going to write like, like I haven't decided no. yet. <laughs> he's probably like, I haven't decided yet. Let's so, see. So anyway, so tune in next time and we'll see how this all turns out. Just stay tuned, everybody. He may or may stay not tuned. run on Christmas Eve, but it's Christmas Eve. I mean, yeah. oh, I'll wait, be... here we go. I did read this chat, silly. I'm not going to be oh, like my, Kyle see... <laughs> and read it aloud to the viewers. See, I'm not going to do something silly like that. He no, is. Kyle is. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm here for. All right, so which one of you guys wants to talk, give a brief thing about the tri generational Margu campaign that happened on Sunday, which is episode 182 repercussions? And the thing I was busy typing, so I, the thing I got out of it was it was a shit show. Pretty much. That's it was it. a shit show. Uh, let's see, it pretty much ended <laughs> uh, with uh, Man Fang taking a ballista to the chest. <laughs> to save him or whatever uh they couldn't use magic completely so he's got like a gauge through the middle of his chest well, oh. at least he has both all his limbs yeah yeah they meet some <laughs> drunken turtles the turtles convinced him that they'll pay him 200 gold pieces to be to be a freak uh, uh, or whatever uh in their little show and tell in, in the bar there was gambling going on so yeah you know bitters yeah it just it gets yeah it, it just quickly accelerates downhill from there folks it's just i think a, that's normal for their sessions though is it it oh, tends yeah. to always be kind of a hilarious 
I feel like that's show. normal yeah, for Alex. everyone's sessions, though. Probably on this, probably on, actually come to think of it. It yeah, ends up that's, in, that's in apropos. obscenities, you know, being overheard by one of our player's spouse who's on a Zoom meeting, <laughs> you know, right outside where he's playing the game. And so, Oops. oh man, it's it's crazy. I mean, the, the tri-generational show is three generations of Franks, uh, also headed up by our DM, Frank. So, if you have yeah. if you if you haven't caught it please go go ahead check it out this is a original crew that uh frank dm'd for when it was geek spiel so anyway these guys have been playing together for years so they decided to go ahead and make a sunday campaign so you can check out last week's episode or go even further back and check it out from the beginning it is in the youtube archives yes so it's a lot of fun. It's a great show. I mean, definitely. Uh, I want to say what about four p.m. four thirty p.m. Eastern. I think uh, it's, it's four. When it goes four p.m. Eastern on Sundays. So <coughs> check it out if you can, folks. Alrighty. And uh, what do you do with the drunken turtle? That's the question. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it was like three of them. So <laughs> Lord knows. All right. All right, so I guess then let's get to the Saturday night game and the main uh, topic for this evening, which is Pathfinder 2. Pathfinder, 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 Pathfinder. There. Now they can't mock me for saying it during this episode. Man, ha, took ha, our 15 ha. minutes. Well, I'm sure they can mock you. Actually, it when took a will? lot. Yeah, but Kyle, it, it I already dropped it like five minutes in. So, I mean. Only five minutes? I thought it would have been like a minute, two. Maybe it was something a minute like that. or something. Yeah. It was right at the beginning. So, uh, hey, Kyle. Hey. Hey, you want to want to give everybody the rundown of the insanity that happened uh, during that game? The that insanity I that happened during the, the game of Pathfinder. I feel like you're stalling. I mean, I, I, he is you know what? He's trying. <laughs> hey, hey, DJ, I, I was going to say, because I figure I'm the one hosting right now, so I'd like to let you guys actually do the talking. And since David already did the other two, fine. DJ, what, do you remember you what go. happened uh, last Saturday? I do remember. I try not to, but uh, <laughs> so block it out, huh? we were playing <laughs> goblins from the Bird Muncher tribe. Who had gone to yeah? Who gone to the Pathfinder Lodge? And apparently, the Pathfinder Lodge gave us a mission to no. work with us. I no, 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 no! You went to the Pathfinder Lodge. Sorry, TJ. You went to Pathfinder Lodge to have them write you a letter of inquiry to Santa. Oh, we you, wanted to work with Santa, and they become, assisted us. To that's work with Santa. right. That's because that's because right. goblins. Words words are bad. They steal. I believe they steal your soul. <laughs> That's okay. what they think. Okay. I forget. Actually, here's here's a question for the GM. Uh, does does Santa give goblins presents? Yeah, he's known as Cinder Claus, and that That's is right, Cinder. Cinder like, yeah, and he That's he right. indeed he does. And Claus like Claus. Yeah, so. Claus. K L A W S. I'm getting I'm getting a, a Nightmare Before <laughs> Christmas vibe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh yeah their version probably would be a bit nightmare before christmas vibe um you know you know the type of things that uh pathfinder goblins like so uh, uh the but best yeah. things but uh <laughs> but, San but but santa's real although he's, he's to everyone else he's santa claus like the normal spelling so so no you wanted jobs you decided you decide there must be more to life than just munching down birds and riding your your pet pig and uh, playing games and all sorts of crazy things it's from all the weepy goblins things. Um, I wish that was my life. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but uh, you were going a little wrong so, on the premise. All right, all right. Well, anyways, uh, we ended up uh, taking a travel, taking a boat. Uh, we had a map made of pictures and we did very well at our survival checks. So we did not get lost in our journey. You get there quickly. Oh yeah, yes. that's right. Dur, I almost, I almost forgot to say the other point. Yeah. Santa sent you on the mission. That's right. Yes. Where did because you we go? Had to, we had to prove that we can craft 
he yes. gave us a, he gave us a shot. You yeah, know, mostly because to. of affirmative action. So. And a map. <laughs> Yeah, we, so we, were, had to go we were to the, the diversity hires. Yeah, so. We had to go to the uh, uh, Island of Misfit Toys to uh, fix one of the toys and bring it back. Oh, to Lord. Prove that we could be good diversity hires. Boy, did <laughs> we work on her. And I think it was <laughs> random. It was random, right? <laughs> All right, the, but the what happened when you get to the island, though? Well, we got to the island, and, you know, we didn't find any yellow snow, so we didn't eat any of that. Sure, that happened at some point. Oh, God, but, of it. but uh, we ended up finding a bunch of toys that apparently were misfit, even though we thought they were fine to begin with. But then there was a giant toy attack, and apparently it was a robot toy that attacked us, clockwork thing. And um, yeah, we fought it, and Kyle attempted to uh, kill uh, Frank's character. <laughs> Yeah, how did he? Yeah, how did you? Oh, yes, how did you attempt to kill Kate Frank's character, Kyle? You guys told me Tom. that I could throw three bombs in one turn, and I <laughs> was true. Like, you can, <laughs> yes, and he did. Yeah, and I told you, you didn't, and I told you you could you could not have splash damage. Yeah, so let, let, let's said, told me that. that like, let's talk yeah, about this for a moment. Go. Let's talk about this for a moment. So, okay, it, to okay. get into the system a little bit. Uh, you were playing the Alchemist class, which is now one of the core classes in Pathfinder 2. In Pathfinder uh, I would say originally. the coolest class in uh, Pathfinder Probably. 2. Probably. So you far. might it, actually it be right really about cool. that. Yeah, you might actually be right about that. It is It is pretty cool. Uh, they had that as an advanced class in Pathfinder 1, and it, it was very, very popular in Pathfinder 1. So they made it into a core class in Pathfinder 2. In fact, goblins in Pathfinder are now a core race yep. in Pathfinder 2. They were not a core race and they I like the fact too that within Pathfinder society and the base setting they've actually worked in a reason why goblins are now more of a player race <laughs> even though goblins are still uh, vicious little they're, they're like vicious cats you know you have like those <laughs> nice cats and everything no no these are more like grumpy cat where they're going to sit on the table and they're going to knock things off and they're going to be like why'd you do that and they're just going to look at you like uh because it was there. <laughs> but now goblins are actually a player <laughs> race, uh, which, let's face it, a lot of people like. I find it a bit distracting, but whatever. That's the way that, that you know what? Give the players the power, right? Yeah. yeah. I, as Kyle, approve of Pathfinder 2 adding goblins as a playable race. And it's a core race, it's in the core book. Exactly as it always should be should in any been. game ever. Yeah. And add a little history. It was, it was, yeah. I mean, a lot of people want to play them in their organized play, but for Pathfinder One, you had to go through, you know, fifteen thousand hoops to actually be able to do it. Now it's it's anybody can play it in in their organized play system. But before you had to literally, I think the only way you can unlock them is you had to go to Gen Con this one year and you had to play through this series of scenarios. And I think that we're talking hard mode here uh, type scenarios. And I think you had to survive and, uh, and then you could get one. Or otherwise you'd have to know someone and do favors because I think that's how our friend favors. DJ favors. Got, no, not me. got it. <laughs> No, 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 D no, no, <laughs> DJ, our mutual friend, and you know who this is. Yes. You know, uh, shout out to Smart Goblin. Uh, basically, uh, he, uh, he, he. Well, he I think he just kind people. of is a slave, anyways, to Pyro. Yeah, he really uh, kind of I is. I mean, I guess we can't use the word slave, but yeah, slave. We're just going to go with that. <laughs> He basically runs Indentured like servant. he runs the <laughs> uh, he runs the young players uh, uh, games at yeah, he does a lot. He so does a lot. I mean he he does do a lot so he it was well earned I'm sure but I think he said he did additional favors to the person who granted it to him oh yeah no that's yeah. right uh, he, that's he basically like, got it from like a con did he get it yeah uh, anyways that's, he, that's so basically anyways. But they real Paizo realized it, that if people wanted to play these little guys, and they made it. They made it so that everyone can now play them. So, and I think it's it's great. And I, it, it's it's funny. I haven't really bumped into any all goblin tables. So, 
there were lots of threats of that, but nah, people people still like playing the other class. That is kind of my nightmare while running a society game. It's just an all <laughs> goblin table. That that really is my nightmare. So uh, yeah, it's um, <laughs> it, it was so. I don't know uh, why you would be afraid of that because yeah. this game of all goblins seemed yeah, rather tame. Well, yeah. yeah, and they did. And well, uh, to give a little history, they actually did have PS One scenarios uh, that we often played at conventions that were called Weeby Goblins. And those were the those are ones. As I said, those are the free RPG day yeah. scenarios they, they came out with. I have to admit, one of my greatest games ever was when we were playing We Be Goblins 1. <laughs> God, we were we were into the characters so much. Everybody at the table, our GM, God bless his soul, uh, he passed away, actually. Oh, yeah. It was him? Yeah. Mike, I want to say. Oh, no, it's it's not it. Ah, no, not I was going to say, the right. one, my first one passed. I'm horrible with names. I'm horrible with names. Anyways, uh, he did a fantastic job, and we were cracking up so hard, and all the other tables around us were so pissed at us because we were so loud and annoying. It was great. <laughs> they were yelling at us. Miles, thank you. Miles, yes. That Miles. was him. He was he was a really great guy, and he was the, my first Pathfinder Society GM. Yes, he was fantastic. And yeah, he passed away a couple of years ago. But, uh... God, that was so much fun. So it is <laughs> it is good to see that goblins can now be in and it does make for a riot, to say the least. So uh -huh. so when let's they come out with it. gunslingers on making Greeny the kid. That if they would ever be come awesome. out with it, man. If they ever come out with bringing gunslingers. Uh they've been kind of dragging the feet on that one. They know everybody wants it though. Kyle, campaign idea. Goblin, uh artificer, uh artillerist. There we go. Greeny the kid. Yep. Yep. I'm not going to steal the idea. DJ's idea, idea yeah. though. I'm so. not going to steal it, but I'm just saying. DJ I mean, Pathfinder so, literally has it, a Western area. It, if the opportunity is presented to DJ, I'm just saying he can come into a DD and d game and be Greeny the kid. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so, DJ, <laughs> so, DJ, what happened next? Do you uh, after remember? we defeated the robot, we met up. Uh, the toys were happy. They led us to uh, wigged uh, Aslan uh, allegory Jesus line, <laughs> um, where he Moonraiser. put us up for the night. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, gave us some cloaks, and we fix and we picked a toy to fix. Carol rolled at random, so we got doll for Susie, which yeah, really that, wasn't I, broken. I, I put the dolls in. <laughs> I put the doll. I put all the. I put the toys in from the song. Although after I went back and watched the special, I realized that there were more than were even on the list that I I had access to. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah. So I basically came with a random you know, over the list and I rolled a D eight. You said eight on the list and I got the dolly for Sue, which no what one. What was wrong with her? Okay, so. Here's the thing. I wondered what was wrong with her. I go to my husband. What the hell is wrong with the doll? She looks perfectly normal and she acts perfectly normal. Uh, so here's what. So I did a little research on this, and apparently one of the producers of the show, uh, I think it was Rankin, as in Rankin and Bass, mm -hmm. and he said that apparently she had self-esteem issues. That she felt that no child could love her. That she was just plain unlovable and nobody she had abandonment issues i guess you could say so so and then i've read a second one that says well her nose was missing and i'm like oh i didn't think so because she doesn't look like she's supposed to really have a nose but i guess that's fair so i basically i rolled this so that was she was going to be the interesting one the other one you had the the, the train with the, uh, with the caboose with the square wheels and the uh the cowboy on the ostrich and the bird that swims and does. Oh, we fixed that one too. By yeah, we fixed that one. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. How did you fix that one? We just ate the ostrich. He's just a cowboy. That's Dog. right. Yeah, Easiest fix ever. They're the bird muncher tribe. So, and um, there's a thing <laughs> adage out there that pretty much anything is edible. The only thing that determines whether or not something is edible or not to a goblin is whether or not it kills you. If it kills you, then it wasn't edible. Otherwise, eating the eating the bird from the, eating the ostrich from the cowboy with the that rides the ostrich was perfectly legit. 
So we also had uh, Betsy Wetsy because our illustrious G, uh, normal GM, Frank, actually, he's not really normal, is he? But he decided he was going to go <laughs> pee on one of the toys. So I had Betsy Wetsy come up and pee on him. And that became a whole weird uh, this is the show is for mature audiences, by the way. Oh, I, I'm pretty sure most mature audiences are like, what? I think I think the mature audiences might have all run away at that point. Probably. <laughs> oh, you would have thought Dita has a kink. So there it is. Wow, <laughs> man. I, leave it to Frank. God, God love him. Uh, but so I threw it in the game. But basically, yeah, the toys, Betsy Wetsy. Actually, that was how we got to the castle is Betsy Wetsy, you know. Hey, big boy. And she had the, I did the really deep voice. We brought her up to the castle. <laughs> so, and then, yes, we did a skill challenge, a real short skill challenge. One that didn't take three hours to complete. Basically, I had them He's go annoying. around the table. And this is something I've seen done multiple times where you go around the table once and everybody contributes something to the check. So, they make a check and they have to justify it with what they're doing. Um, I don't remember. Let's see. Uh, I don't remember what everybody friggin' did. I know. I know some. Uh, what'd you do, DJ? This is an example. Uh, I did. What did I do? Oh, medicine. Medicine. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I added. I did the plastic surgery to put the nose. That's yeah. right. And I allowed a medicine check, even though she's not really a person. They're That's alive. Close enough. They're alive. They are alive. They're breathing. Well, they're not breathing. No, and let's face it. This is goblin medicine. This is goblin medicine. Mm -hmm. They're so, excellent right? at that prosthetics. Work. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. You lost you something, had... we'll just give you a new one. <laughs> <laughs> so you had Dita, who uh, taught her how to love. You had. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Dave, Dave, I don't remember what your character Ta name was. Tuffy. 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 Tuffy taught her to dance and be free and really Not enjoy very herself. well, though. DJ uh, um, <laughs> gave her a nose job. Gave her a nose job. Yep. And a frog munch gave her two big handfuls <laughs> of confidence. <laughs> And not not goblin handfuls, no. giant handfuls. There was they, huge tracks of land. <laughs> they yes, turned we, her, we turned her into Betty Boop. Betty Boop. <laughs> Although you needed to work on her butt too if you're going to really turn her into Betty Boop. You know what? That came with the package. Yeah, I'm sure. it, it was then, a package deal. So yeah. So each person basically made a a skill check in conjunction with what they what they did. So uh, like uh, here she goes bragging Tuffy. about her successful skill Shh. challenge. Hey, hey, no, it's Tuffy. I'm just going to try to explain it. Tuffy basically made a performance check and said, "DJ, uh, the hell was your Moogie? Moogie made a, a medicine check and." Frank, oh for God, I don't remember. Frank, oh, Frank I mean, was... Frank had to make two checks. First, he had to convince Ooh, her like to go with persuasion. her, and then persuasion to go with her, or no, diplomacy. Like it's Something. diplomacy in this. System. Yeah, oh yeah, you rolled a nat twenty. Yeah, he had to persuade a real fucking real asshole. World of that twenty to persuade <laughs> her to go with him. and then I think it was performance dog or acrobatics <laughs> or something like that. Uh, I'm not going to say what they did, and then you made. But I she think came you back made. Yeah, I think you made two crafting checks because basically you made one crafting check. I make one crafting check for me yeah. to, you know, and then, put the boltons on and uh, a crafting check for everybody. Right. So I then, remember, yeah, to finally finish to finish the project. That, that basically what happened was all their crafting checks, the successive failures basically were figured in. And actually there were two critical successes. I think mean, you have one and I know Frank have one somewhere along or someone have one uh and basically that was considered two successes we adding not ones or 10 below because criticals failures and successes are either 10 above the dc or 10 below the dc uh if you if they get that or they rolled a nat one then it would have been a minus two uh or two failures so i did that and then i took you know what was left over so you have way more successes than failures and i basically added plus two for every success you had over your failures so and then you rolled ridiculously well which played into the final part of the game all right so then what happened after you left 
Because you spent the night, you got cloaks to yeah. keep you warm. So we, uh, after we spent the night, probably trashed the place. We never got into that, but we probably did. Uh, we never we said took that. took a sleigh ride with a goat and all the misfit toys. Don't ask us about the physics. We just made it work somehow. Yeah. We're you using like or enough... 40K logic or something. I don't know. You I... had a big enough cart. It was a take... really strong goat, all right? It was a really strong goat. I know you guys should know. We could have had a reindeer. A big I mean. card. <laughs> uh, we did end up having to lose some of the weight uh, uh, in the next part. Yeah. So uh, apparently, we all failed our as we traveled along. We all failed our uh, perception checks, even though we had some really high perception checks. Mm, uh, no, you didn't have any really really high ones. I thought we did because uh, oh. uh, whatever. Yeah. So we didn't have any high perception checks. That's right. We all rolled crap. Even I with I. With my plus eleven to perception. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, the s- abominable uh, snow monster. Snow monster. It is. That's snow. what it is. It's, it's the wampa. It's the wampa. Just gonna use it's wampa. the wampa. <laughs> it's the snowman, <laughs> and I don't take no lip from no man. <laughs> uh, right. Robot chicken is the best. Um. So, anyways, uh, it came out, attacked us, Rawr! and it did. Crappy because it didn't hit us. It didn't scare us. Ha 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 ha, Carol. <laughs> uh, my and then we fought it, and it was a long, arduous battle because all our dice stole. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Your dice were much better than mine. Okay, uh, so tell us we had better action economy. <laughs> so yeah, I mean they get so basically in Pathfinder two, you get three at, t- at three actions every round. Um, there are some things you can do that take up more than one action, like a lot of spells do. A lot of spells are two actions, so you basically can get a spell it and a move. Uh, there's a few that are three action, there's a few that are one action, uh, like shield. If you cast shield, that's a one action spell. And not like D&D with those pesky rules about casting spell, you know, two spells around. You can do that in this system. <laughs> That's to me like one of the best parts. So if I want to cast, you know, uh, all right, two round magic missile. Uh, basically, every missile you shoot off, uh, each action you shoot off a missile in this in this version. So usually you want to stand there and just put your whole entire round in casting three magic missiles, get the most out of it. But but let's say you're in a dire, really dire straits, and you need it guaranteed to hit. So then you could cast uh, two action magic missiles, so two missiles, and then you can cast shield. So I like that a lot better. <laughs> Sorry, D&D. Yeah, admittedly, there's lots of stuff you can do, and we didn't even get to show a quarter of that. Yeah, I mean, two um, hours is I show a few. Show I sh- a yeah, I showed a few things, but as a healer, it's actually quite impressive, um, especially with the way they worked the heal spell. Uh, for each amount of action you use, so if I use one, two, or three actions, it actually will do a gr- uh, lesser, greater amount. With a um, single action heal, uh, if I got this right, it's been a while since I've looked at this. Uh, I believe it's you can touch somebody and heal them. If you yep. use two actions, you can actually heal somebody at range. And Here's the other thing, though. A one action heal, it's a 1d8. I don't remember if there's a plus on that. There may be. Uh, here we go. I got it now. I, yeah. I actually have the character up. Uh, yeah, it's anywhere from one to three actions. Uh, one action, somatic only. The spell has a, has a range of touch. So basically, you can touch somebody and heal them. Uh, which I think I did. No, I did, I used the other one that was uh, more use, funny. I used risky surgery. You, yeah, use your first <laughs> Which is hilarious. Yeah, you use surgery. Uh, <laughs> we'll get to that. <clears throat> But two actions, uh, what you're doing, verbal and somatic, he spells in range of 30 feet. Uh, if you're healing a living creature, increase the hit points restored by eight. So you're doing more da- and more healing, and it's now ranged. And if you use all three actions, all three, um, it's material, somatic, uh, verbal, uh, you disperse positive energy in a 30-foot emission, I'm assuming center from you. Yeah. This targets all living and undead creatures in the burst. So basically, That's... you heal and potentially harm all things around you. He harmed. Uh, yeah, you can also heighten spells, um, which will increase the amount of effect that they have 
Uh, this one is uh, with a height, you the healing increases a certain amount uh, now, by 1d8. I do want to add one big difference there, though. Um, when you heighten a spell in Pathfinder, you have to prep it that way, unless you have a class that has signature spells. Spontaneous caster, yeah. Yeah, there's this class that have stick where you can pick them as what they call signature spells, and then they, you can automatically just take a higher spot. Yeah. Um, like you do in D&D. But a lot of cases, you have to actually prep it at a higher level if you, unless you do that. Well, same um, thing with D&D, too. And yeah. many other games. So, yeah. D&D, you, just, D &D, you could just heighten it automatically. I believe yeah. Wizard has to memorize it that way. I'd have to look, but I'm pretty sure you can just heighten it. I don't know. I, I forget. Maybe you're right. <laughs> I it, would it's know. been a little while. I haven't played it's fine. Let's let's look at these Pathfinder nerds talk about D and D. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> to... I I am an all RPG nerd. I will talk about <laughs> Palladium. I will talk about Cthulhu. Oh, I will Lord. talk about uh, I'll talk about Beats of Masterminds. Really oh God, Beats of Masterminds. <laughs> Third edition, best, best system ever. Best system ever. <laughs> I'm, so... I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. <laughs> But I, li I like to highlight, since this is such a D, normally a D&D centric show, I like to highlight the differences between the two systems. You know, it would have been really <laughs> nice to really get into the healing on the show. Yeah. But Carol couldn't hit anything and that well, just that was my ruined everything. fucking dice. I mean, okay, so, <laughs> so basically I was using the Yeti from the, from the monster manual, uh, you know, from the Pathfinder Beast Diary, excuse me. Uh, and confusing have, systems, huh? They really, <laughs> yeah. They the thing of it is, is they have this. They have a really neat ability if they get to the drop on you. And and I had to drop on them because not only did I, not only did I out stealth them, and they have a really good. They have a plus fifteen to stealth in snow, because they're white and they can hide in snow, really well. Um, there's actually a thing if they stay put, they actually get concealment too. So. They're harder to hit. Um, but the thing that happens is, if it can't, like, I tried to get David. He was the one, he, he was the unlucky recipient of the friggin', you know, when I rolled the randomly to see who I was going to hit first. She had it out for Tuffy all night. <laughs> uh, okay, no. She did. So, so he there. can, so he can leap onto him. Basically, he can leap and, you know, he was, he had some really nasty abilities. Uh, if he hit with two, you know, two strikes. Basically, his, uh, his action was two strikes. Um, so if he hit with both attacks, then he could rend, which DJ actually called on the show before I even said anything. I'm. I, I think I'm actually psychic. <laughs> so basically, rending is. I so I take the damage per one strike. Rend is you automatically add that damage on again. So it would have been like. If I hit with all three, I think it would have been something like, I should say like 60, 10 plus whatever. I'd have to look up the stats, but it was a crap ton of damage. But I could never get two strikes in a row. Um, but when I, if, if I had hit him in the first round, he has this ability, basically, he's it's so horrific the way apparently he rips into somebody that everybody at the table would have to make a, a whiz, uh, will saves. Said or become saying. frightened or become frightened and, and then what happened later on in that fight to your wampa? yeah you guys okay so basically <laughs> was it frank intimidated frank. him right frank oh. intimidated him and, and that was fear too because he i think he critically succeeded somewhere some one of them was a critical success so, so hold too. on hold on let's talk about why you said fear too um or fright, in yeah, this, frightened. in pathfinder 2 they have conditions like most games do, but they actually have levels of conditions. Which yeah, most of the three also has the same thing. Um, it's, it's anyways. It's, uh, basically, it, <laughs> you have levels of uh, uh, of conditions. So with like fear, it, think about it how like you know you have somebody who's like spooked a little bit, and then you have the screaming teenager running from the megalomaniac down the hall. Uh, so those are like you know you have various levels of fear and what it can do to you. No, I was gonna say it's not it's not levels. It's point. Usually, what is fear uh, conditions rather come with a number in the system, and that number deducts 
uh, penalizes your dice rolls by that much. And sometimes it's only certain dice rolls. Like uh, I can't remember them all, but there's there's there basically there's one where okay, it'll 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 if you like take I guess Constitution damage, it'll penalize your Constitution rolls. So anything actually, there isn't a lot of skills for Constitutionists there. But you know, if if you um, I know there's one that does charisma based like all your charisma based skills. And that actually does figure in pretty prominently. Uh, it'll penalize that by that number of the condition. So if it's one, it penalizes by one, all your rolls by one for that. If it's two, three, usually four, I think is the high watermark. Um, and dying is a condition too. So, and you don't want to hit dying four because that means you're dead. I never got to play with that either in, in, over the night too. And I was hoping I'd drop someone in that last fight. So, because I think the death and dying system is is really interesting the way they did it so that you don't, they, they wanted to stop the constant yo-yoing that you get, like you go down and someone heals you, you're back up and you're perfectly fine. And you're gonna get dropped again, then somebody heals you. Well, you can only do that so many times before you die. In, <laughs> in Pathfinder 2. Yeah. And I like that, I, I really like that a lot. Uh, so. the, and actually, one of the things too about healing is uh, they have a downtime <laughs> healing system. Yeah, I, I was actually technically using that. Um, yeah, that I is. Used, what I have a feat that actually allowed me to use it in the middle of combat too. Yeah, yeah, actually, uh, so you had a couple. Ex- yeah, so rather than expending uh, healing spells, uh, they have the ability to just use medicine to heal you, and you can get treated once an hour normally. But the way Carol uh, built Moogie. I was able to actually heal people every 10 minutes and I had one called risky surgery, which allowed me to uh, use healing in the middle of battle. Um, no, 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 oh, wait, no. Risky that, surgery. Risky. No, no that's that just grants me the extra feet. That's battle. Battle medicine, battle medicine is the one you're thinking of. Yeah, risky surgery. Now I gave this because it's a god one. I mean, of course they're going to do this. Risky surgery is basically you do damage to the person you're healing. Basically, you're doing surgery on them and uh, you do 1d8 worth of damage. But the ben- the benefit to that is though, if you succeed, even just a normal success, and so again, you have that sliding scale successes too. Uh, but if you have a normal success, it automatically becomes a critical success and you double the amount of healing you do. So it goes from 2d8 to 4d8 and that's, no, that's yeah. sorry. Chat distracted me there. <laughs> <laughs> Coming Anyways. up on Blue Rose. Time. Yeah, I mean, it can go longer. All right, your um, call. Um, no. Oh, anyways, I, we 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 defeated the Wampa eventually. Yeah. Actually, I'll just end it with this. <laughs> Ultimately, they did get they defeated. Yeah, the Wampa or the abominable snow uh, snow monster. <laughs> uh, they got to Santa's workshop, and when they presented Betty Boop. Uh, he realized, even though it was Betty Boop, Santa uh, Claus had a candy cane in his pocket. Let's leave it at that. We'll leave it no, at that. No, 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 no. So <laughs> Santa Claus said, "Well, you'll have to learn to tone it back." But he immediately gave them jobs because I had I had the sliding scale on my what you know. If a fi- if you guys have failed, then he would have been like, "Sorry, we're 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 not hiring at this point. Uh, you could try again later." And Sorry, we've already brought our lawyers and sued. Yeah. <laughs> and then, Next yeah, game but, would have been us lawyers. <laughs> no, lawyers. It, it would have been, you know, it would have been, yeah, but you you built something of poor quality. So, oh man. And then if oh, you succeeded, I wish we had done that. If you as, had succeeded, wait, if you had succeeded, just a regular success, then what I was going to have you do was you were going to have to make a, like a round of diplomacy checks. I have written in the, 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 Thing. But I think it was like I was going to have you make diplomacy checks to convince him to give you a job. But you critically succeeded that final check. <laughs> it was ridiculous. And as a result, he like immediately was, he was so impressed by the crafting job that he immediately just gave you a job. So you didn't go through any of their bullshit. <laughs> so, yeah, so that check did figure in at the end. So, all right. So I will say I will... that's one of the things I really enjoyed about the Pathfinder 2 game was even though it was almost impossible to hit anything, 
the huge numbers. It's like, oh, I rolled a 32 on crafting. You don't really get to do that in D&D too much or no, at all, really. <laughs> they really compressed all the numbers down uh, in D&D. It is still and Math Pathfinder. Pathfinder mm. is definitely still Mathfinder. I I mean, I, I mean, I, I do I like it. I kind of like the crunchier system. So um, yeah, no, crunch no. is crunch really suits the Pathfinder game. But it's it's not and quite as obnoxious. The bombs were so fun. <laughs> the other thing is, I don't think it's, it's quite as obnoxious though as the old system. I think it's sort of a it's an in between D and D five V and you know three three And 5. just and actually for maybe some people who don't know much about older D&D, Pathfinder was derived from D&D 3.0 yeah. and 3.5. Five. So, yeah. And obviously, Pathfinder 2nd Edition is still different, you know, a good amount, but at the same time, it still has a lot of that formulaic uh, core to it. Uh, to, I'll say this. You know, you can thank uh, uh, Watsy for there being a, a Pathfinder because basically they decided Paizo was a third party publisher. Thank Watsy for publisher. a lot of stuff afterwards. Then. Paizo was a third party publisher and they wouldn't decided that they weren't going to be so open with uh, 4E. And Paizo's going, well, what the hell are we going to do? So what they did was they took the system that their game director had been working on, he had been tweaking it and such. So it's not. It definitely was different, and they ran with that. And uh, they, you know, Watsy made probably one of the biggest comp competitors because they wouldn't share and keep them as a third-party publisher. So <laughs> keep that in mind, folks. And then they learned from it. <laughs> they have DMs Guild. And oh yeah, yeah. Drive through RPG or and all that, and so. <sighs> all right. Learned Watsy the hard way. Learned. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, let's cut to the final part of this because uh, we're going to go to Kyle for this because he's the only one they think has read any of the book. Because Kyle and Caitlin both start with the same letter. T. No, they don't. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this week's episode is brought to you by the letter T. <laughs> All right, all right. Time all right, for all right, for time, right. which we're almost out of. <laughs> oh, that's fine. We if got I like make it go nine long, minutes. I don't have to explain everything. Yeah. Uh, uh, so this uh, upcoming Saturday, and I don't recall if we said Cacophony was happening on Thursday. Still I haven't gotten a word. <laughs> Still haven't gotten the word from the boss man if uh, Thursday is happening. This Saturday, we continue on playing different games, and we're actually going to take a huge... Uh, uh, step out of D, &D <laughs> as opposed to dipping our toes in the Pathfinder water, and we are going to be playing uh, uh, the Blue Bells, but Blue Rose, uh, uh, which is an age uh, uh, system style game. Uh, now, this game uh, originated uh, uh, back in 2005 using the True Twenty system, which uh, uh, DJ knows quite a bit about. But since we only have nine minutes. We'll wait, and if there's time left, he can talk about it. Uh, but the idea of the game was, uh, as opposed to uh, going with high fantasy or going with grim dark or any of those sci-fi, uh, uh, they decided to develop my romantic fantasy game, and not where everyone's all lovey-dovey and. Blah, 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 blah. But the idea of knights' chivalry of true good in the world, and that it can be found everywhere. And the other goal was to make sure that it was all inclusive. So you had your straight, gay, bi, lesbian, although I think they fall under the gay category. Uh, my wife will beat me up over this later because she's she she hates when I do that. Uh, trans and, <laughs> and furries, especially, is what I'm finding out. <laughs> although, are dolphins furries or? Uh, sure. Anyway, 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 the game came out. Being... There was some... address it in the game. <laughs> oh, thank God. Uh, I didn't get that part. Uh, I just got the first nine pages. Uh, it was on the tenth page, it turns out. <laughs> that was the whole page, too. That was the whole page. <laughs> Our dolphins furries. <laughs> the oh, answer Lord. is actually on the fourteenth page. <laughs> I didn't have time to read through it all. <laughs> Uh, but the game came out with a bit of controversy. Uh, uh, 
Uh, and then in 2015, uh, Kickstarter uh, started up by Kenson. Is that right, DJ? Uh, if it is Steve Kenson, I believe so. I believe uh, it is. I'd Steve have to look Kenson. that up to myself. Uh, was one I like of the Steve one of the workers on this and converted the system to its current uh, iteration, which is the age system, which is a D6 system, which, you know, you will need a max of three D6s if you play. So that'll be nice and easy. Uh, uh, but this game is a uh, similar blend. They subtract all the classes down to the, your three, which is adept class, which is your type of magic user, which could also be psychic magic in this case. Uh, your experts, who again are just your specialists in certain areas, and your warriors, your fighters, and then from there you pick different feats, different talents, and you really get to make whatever character you want just by kind of picking whatever happens to pop up. Um, man, what else is there to say about it? Uh, the judging from a podcast I listened to to cram in as much information about Blue Rose as I possibly can. <laughs> <laughs> Along with their conversion of True 20 to the age system, a lot of things they also tried to do was add in a lot of new stuff uh, uh, from writers who um, had experience with those things through their life things. Uh, whether they were trans and they would write cultural things for trans people, um gay people doing that and really just trying to give the work out to the people who had the experience for it one of the things mentioned which i hope is in the book i haven't actually read it i do have the table of contents here but i didn't really get a chance to look at it was uh having a a, a group of deaf a, a deaf culture where they are the quiet ones knights whose sole purpose is to hunt down sirens banshees and anything that uses sound to try and kill you that's really cool right i heard that that is like, really that is, that's awesome cool. that's and wow. so the idea is that you know people with i'm going to go with disabilities aren't accepted yeah. but they're yeah. venerated and they're brought up and they're heroes they do have a place people look at them and be like wow I'm going to take a nail and punch my ears out so I can join the quiet ones. Oh, I don't Lord. suggest that. At all. <laughs> no. I, I, you know what? I, I don't that think might I not be the case. That. But <laughs> um, what else can I say about this game? Uh, um, I actually did find the authors. Uh, oh, you did. Am Jeremy I wrong? Crawford, Steve Kenton is one of them. Oh, when, I, when I first okay. read this, I almost I had to do a double uh, double take. Uh, Jack Norris. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I was like, wait, Chuck Norris? What? <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> Chuck I, for a second there, I thought it was. Uh, His son, Chris, Jack uh, Norris, wrote it. Yeah, and which, yeah. if you don't know how Chuck Norris reproduces, he just cut <laughs> off his hand and out drew Chuck Norris. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, we need Probably. a Chuck. We need a Chuck Norris. Uh, All right. Uh, anyways, then there's also Chris. Uh, I'm going to put you these last name. Uh, I Par Parmas and John Sneed. Sned. Sorry uh, to you guys. Yes, I am horrible with names. I apologize. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, I'm a huge fan of uh, Steve Kenton. I actually played with him uh, at, now we know um, at a local convention that uh, uh, at our o OGC? OGC? Or was it Tolocon? No, it was OGC. Wow, OGC, yeah, that's oh right. God, long ago, long ago. Yeah. Um, you still had your mice because we had to bring them. Thanks, Pat's. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, it was uh, it was actually for his second edition, and I ended up playing uh, his character Sonic from the intro adventure. Uh, I really like Sonic. He was a uh, he was a kid from like the suburbs, uh, uh, kind of like Static Shock in a way. He had a very Static Shock feel to him. I really liked him, but instead he had Sonic powers. Really cool. Love that character. Uh, but yeah, he he's a really cool guy. We did have got a lot of good names who went into this, it sounds like. Yes. Yeah. Steve Kenson's smart. And if you ever get a chance, read his meetings and mastermind stuff. He knows his comic book crap. <laughs> next year, DJ. Next year. Oh, I will I, know, I will pull I out know. my I will put I will pull out all my meetings and mastermind stuff. I have so much of his stuff. I'm hoping uh, actually he'll run Starfinder on this at some point too, because that's that is a 
Star Wars D6, Starfinder. I, I think Starfinder is. I, I like Starfinder probably even more than I like. I like Chewie. I like. I like oh, okay. both. Yeah, I, like I, I, I can agree with that. Uh, something about but, Starfinder is really nice. Yeah, something really. We're talking cool about, about Blue Rose, but let's continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, no, no go, 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 go. David, go. what were you saying, real fast? I was gonna say, uh, those of you who don't know, Jeremy Crawford is the creative director at Wizards of the Coast. Yeah, and he's saying... one of the architects that is bringing more diversity into the adventures and into uh fifth edition dungeons and dragons uh him and We're also vetting Chris... him with blue rose first before we exactly <laughs> that's like i know the names on that with crawford and, and some, Tencent, some, holy crap. some big names yeah yeah so uh, but just to add what i've read from the blue rose stuff it looks like a lot of the your pillars, your typical pillars of uh, uh, of D and D or role playing games, combat, uh, 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 social, and exploration. This one really tries to bring out the role playing aspect by uh, introducing yeah. a dichotomy to your characters a lot more than what I've seen D and D do or Pathfinder necessarily do. Now I need to read up on Pathfinder a little bit more to actually get and confirm that but uh, there's lots of choices where there's the light side to a character and a shadow side uh to a character and so there's the hard road to get what you want and there's the easy slippery slope to get what you want uh uh, and i guess the best way to really talk about that is through their use of arcana which is all magic things psionics healing and all that and then sorcery which is their dark manipulating side of the arcana and how that corrupts people which i believe that's similar to warhammer a little bit they have something <laughs> right hey, you slayed, we played that too actually <laughs> oh my god i mean i love warhammer that it's a brutal that warhammer is uh, such a brutal War, system warhammer. man <laughs> i love you warhammer <laughs> I have next year. I have the old. I have next the old. Year. I have the old systems. I, oh, oh man. Oh man. I have to bust out all the careers on that one. The so second edition. Actually, we just tried. I did try some of the new Warhammer, uh, the newer version of it, uh, with my group recently. It's actually very close to the old version, but I, I love the career system in there, where you can nice. play a, uh, a a fishmonger or a coal, a charcoal. Uh, maker or rat catcher or a camp follower or all sorts nice <laughs> camp follower uh yeah that's the that's the polite way of saying it yeah okay <laughs> i thought that's what it was <laughs> <laughs> all right but uh guys pay attention uh and you know volunteer if you want to try out this blue rose game uh caitlin who is currently driving couldn't be on the show tonight to really get into it uh, uh, is going to be the narrator. See how they're more into the role play stuff there, yeah. just by saying that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, and there is apparently a slew of various characters that you could play that she's already posted about, including Beatrice, the lone wolf, literally, Hugo Shelley, oh, a thoughtful night person, mm-hmm. which a night person is a mix of a homunculus. And an orc. They're like the Urukai, I suppose. In oh, Lord interesting. Of the Rings. They're, yeah. they're made yeah. people. Uh, you have Nade Dahl, and I don't know, are you trans if you haven't gone through the the surgeries and stuff? I think so. You're still trans. trans. I, want to okay. say You're yes. still trans. I think it's more I think at first it's more of a state of mind before you go physically. Yeah. Trans gotcha. is the opposite word, transition. So yeah. Okay, so, okay. So yeah, yeah, we have a transition character on there, male to male to female. I'm, I'm a Hoosier and a hick from Indiana, so I know and I'm not a lo- in line. Oh, we're right. doing our well, best. You're young. You, know you should be in touch. You should be in all you should know. No, about I'm an old this. man. I'm a grumpy old you're man. You're way younger than me, buddy. And yep. I mean, I want to have a grumpy old man off with him now because I, I could be really grumpy. <laughs> it's me. I mean, it's like I've got to learn. I mean, I've got to. I feel like there's so much to have to learn about all this. Uh, but let's see. You know, you got people again who are just playing against types. You have a. Uh, 
Eliza, who <coughs> is a warrior but wants to be a pacifist first and foremost. Oh my God, uh, I love uh, and who uh, Ellen Kohler, who looked interesting to me, which is someone who was born during an eclipse and so she's destined for great things and she's believed it all her life uh but one of the things that make makes them unique is because they were born under a full moon they have both parts uh they are a label Uh, is what they call it in the game uh so i don't know how that feels and we're gonna die during the game with the long road ahead uh but No, there's a lot of interesting characters that it looks like Caitlin has uh, ready for us, and make sure you have D6s ready. Three of them. Two of them have to be the same color. One of them has to be different. Uh, It it has to do with a bunch of stuff that I don't understand because... I think I can accommodate. (laughs) Let me see. Let me see. The actual... Here. This is the section about the age. That I was able to get in the nine pages. I don't know why, but you need two dice of the same color and one different. Okay. Uh, You'll figure that. It'll it'll be figured out during the game. Absolutely. But, you know, just to kind of wrap this up now, uh, if you want to play, you can email us at Murder Hobo Inc. You can talk to us on Discord. Uh, uh, You got the Murder Hobo Inc. dice, baby, baby. Huh? Dice, dice, why'd you dice, say? Baby. Yeah, I was gonna say why'd you say baby twice and then I, got I know it. I should have gone. Yeah, dice. I just yeah, got actually, some. I just got some. actually, that's right, that's right. So, oh. so there's a thing a that See, if you play, if you play oh, or yeah, right. uh, GM on this three times, Frank will send you dice and a drink koozie. Yeah, yeah, I've I been using my drink koozie. So yeah, and the dice are awesome. By the way, I've, they I've... roll ones constantly. That's yes. that's bullshit. Actually, my <laughs> roll like. Oh, uh, uh, get me some d10s then for Murder Hobo Inc. So I could use them for Call of Cthulhu <laughs> and for Warhammer if they roll really low because you want go. low rolls for those games. Which we'll so talk about is... on a later between the rolls and possibly a future game. Probably. A DJ. Oh, man. man, I will bust out Boot Hill for God's sakes. <laughs> oh, God. hey, wait, We're going to have to bring out a play... palladium system, you know, wait, like Ghostlands wait, 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 wait. or something. It's all over on that shelf. I have a bunch <laughs> hey, stored away. Hey, DJ. Gamma was... World. DJ. Was... There we go. DJ, was Boot yes. Hill the one that Bruce Campbell had basically said that if anyone was ever playing it, he'd join in? Uh, I think it's no, the, I don't think it's that one. Oh, it's what it was one of them. I know we said he was like, hey, there we go. We should put we should find out whatever that is and then contact him. like, hey, don't I'm a know which brain. one. I, I remember this conversation, but I forget which game. Anyways, yeah, no, no. I've actually done some of the Kickstarters. I have a friend who is technically one of their GM people. Uh, yeah, I, I love it. All right, so let's go around the table real fast with final thoughts. David, you go first, because we always pick on you. All right. Uh, our, uh, gang, uh, our gaming experience for this entire month is just, I mean, it's diversity. We have, we've, we've got the D&D aspect. We've got uh, the Pathfinder aspect. And now we're going to even try another uh, uh, game system, which is the, the D6 system. So or what you call dragon age games, system age, age system so so yeah it's it's pretty exciting uh stuff i mean i'm a new player basically so yeah so this this is a chance to try it all so he's gonna, he's gonna say he's a new player like 10 years later when he's on the stream that I is am. true that is <laughs> <accurate>. true <laughs> <laughs> all right carol final thoughts uh okay so um I had a blast running Pathfinder 2 on this, and maybe we'll get to do it again someday. I, I'm glad you guys had a good time, at least I think you had a good time. We did. Uh, you know what? <laughs> Try it. Uh, I think if anybody wants to, you know, anybody interested in uh, Pathfinder or learning about more, you can always DM me on Twitter at uh, my nope, handle is at Muses. System sucks. Yeah, my at, at my my Twitter handle is at muses <laughs> underscore touch, and you can always you can do that you can you also can DM me DM me about miniature painting questions too. I never did my official intro, which is I'm a longtime gamer, occasional GM, and and a miniature. Why are painter. you introducing yeah. yourself at Stuff the end? Now. Because yeah. I forgot to do it at the beginning. <laughs> but I and, right. well, wait one final thing, right. of course. Right. I, I want to wish everybody out there Thanks a too. very merry Christmas. 
Happy holidays. Uh, Hanukkah's passed. Or happy, happy Ramadan. Uh, happy Christmas Hanukkah. There we go. I like to celebrate Hanukkah late personally, but that's just me. Um, no reason in particular. Uh, but uh, Festivus. That's right. Festivus <laughs> for the rest of us. Thank you, Frank, for the reminder. Uh, I, I, just I, uh, I will be the resident person who doesn't like to celebrate anything and just says you all. <laughs> ah, that bring you final, all down. Yeah, that that's my final, final thought, thought is Bah Humbug. My final thought Dick. is Bah Humbug. All right, guys, that's it for the show tonight. You know, you can follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our archive. If you want to shoot the shit about DD, we do have a Discord channel. <laughs> if you want to buy some cool RPG gifts, you know, there's still time for you to get it next year and then give yes. to them and say yeah. it's like Christmas. But you can find some of that stuff. Uh, 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 most importantly, if you do want to play in Blue Rose, it does look to be an interesting game. Again, yeah. I get out of that one, one system rut. Uh, go ahead and email us or get us on Discord. That's Murder Hobo Inc. M Hobo, I think it's M Hobo Inc. Edge. It's probably somewhere on the but, screen here. But the okay. uh, but the email, <laughs> it is. The, but the <laughs> like, email, which is typically what I think the best way to get him or get Frank at is uh, is it what it's M Hobo Inc. at gmail dot com. Correct. Just in the title message, I want to yep. play a sexed up dolphin, and he'll know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. A furry dolphin. I'll, well, again, that actually, has to be determined. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> it is all inclusive, so. <laughs> uh, but. <laughs> oh, I see. Wait, oh, how does he have air? Oh. How does he have air? <laughs> wow. Did he steal the hair from somebody? We're going to hope on. that no one can hear Frank. Yeah, can Frank? But we're can everyone actually hear Frank? My ears are bleeding, folks. Pirate dog dice for killer dice. It was a Hitler landing thank strip you to dolphin. Oddfishgames.com <laughs> for the how to run your RPG with your cat. But that's yeah. not the thing they're pushing. They're pushing uh, uh, their Dying. Adventure Advent Sense and their Shine Project, which, again, <laughs> that is one of the things I've read, studied, wrote notes upon, and have absolutely enjoyed when they come out with their RPG version. That'll be something that I have Frank buy for me again as well. Um, <laughs> other than that, everybody wave goodbye. It's gone long, just like uh, Carol's everything Carol episode. does. Hey, you know, we'll, we'll, I'll remember bye, that the next time you run it three hours. <laughs>